for more than 20 years, uh, much of my research has been focused on the subject of climate change and especially its implications for how we lead our lives, its implications for the economy and so on. It is, in my mind, the most important of the work that I have been doing at the Institute. We are at a defining moment in history. We now recognise that the changes that have occurred by virtue of our burning of fossil fuels is altering the character of the planet in a remarkable and disturbing way. There is now a near consensus in the scientific community uh, that changes are occurring uh, induced by human activity which is altering the character of the planet in a disturbing way. Uh, so disturbing uh, that it is leading to, for instance, the melting of the Arctic ice caps, to the release of methane in the tundra regions of Asia and North America um, to such an extent as to be grave, a grave cause for concern. That concern is reflected in the impact it is having uh, on the climate for instance, in the rising temperatures uh, around the world, the fact that for the last 20 years or so have been the hottest that have ever been recorded, um, uh, the fact that the concentration of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere is rising inexorably in spite of any efforts that governments around the world have made to reduce uh, carbon-based activity. One of the more eminent world scientists on climate has calculated that we can only view the future uh, as uh, safe if the concentration of those emissions is at about 350 parts per million very recently, the record shows that it has already risen to 400 parts per million, and the UK government has expressed the difficulties of limiting it even to 500 parts per million. These are levels of concentration way in excess of what they have been for a million years. Moreover, uh, the UK government's uh, climate change Act of 2008, on which present policy is based, uh, does not include most of the feedback mechanisms which are exaggerating the significance of the emissions because they are leading to side effects which are themselves growing greater. For instance, because of the loss of the reflective surface of snow as the snow melts, there is a secondary impact which is adding to the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere because the sun's radiation is getting through to the surface of the planet uh, at a more extreme level. A two degree rise in temperature above the level uh, that there was up till the Industrial Revolution has been shown to be the level beyond which the climate will be totally out of control from human activity. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, has calculated uh, that there is now only a 5% chance of us not exceeding the 2 degree It is said uh, that we have got to curtail our use of fossil fuels and uh, other ways whereby the CO2 in the atmosphere is rising by adopting policies of virtual zero carbon emissions.
fairly recently Nicholas Stern who was um, engaged by the government to write a report on the economics of climate change which was published in 2006 has stated uh, that the situation is far far worse than he realised in 2006 when he was writing his report. What's the explanation for the inadequacy of government action uh, on this front? In my view, one of the main reasons is that it does not acknowledge uh, the harsh fact that any further burning of fossil fuels is making the possibility of sufficient radical change in our behaviour uh, to occur. Thus, the continuation of lifestyles which depend, are dependent on flying, for instance, um, are, uh, and the government catering to accommodate that uh, demand by investment in m more airport capacity, in high-speed rail systems and so on, can only make that uh, e an even greater problem than we now face if we are to take those projections of the IPCC uh, sufficiently seriously. Again, the explanation for this is that carbon emissions remain in the atmosphere for well over a hundred years, so that even were we to stop burning of fossil fuels, their concentration would continue to rise. And certainly that is true in relation to the UK government's activities. The UK government believes itself to be in the vanguard of policies which will tackle climate change seriously. Uh, but since we have this uh, time projection over a hundred years, uh, and since it entails every country in the world curtailing the emissions of its population, we have a extreme problem on our hands. Much of the failure of government is also explained by the language used. For instance, projects approved by government are referred to as ones which will deliver carbon dioxide reductions, um, therefore meeting the objective of the government meeting its targets. The reality is, of course, that the effect of those more efficient uh, uses of fossil fuels is simply leading to a reduction in the rate of increase in uh, the emissions, not in reducing the emissions. The only way of reducing emissions would be to sack carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and then sequester it underground. But uh, the development of technology has not yet reached uh, that level of sophistication, uh, nor uh, can we look to a time when that is so and when we can at the same time um, afford to do so on the worldwide scale that would be necessary. Another instance of this um, uh, careless use of language is that gas is referred to as one of the cleanest of fossil fuels, overlooking the fact that it is indeed a dirty fuel in terms of carbon emissions and therefore it should be being described as a damaging uh, fossil fuel, albeit less damaging than from the burning of coal or oil. No other aggregation of human behaviour in recorded history can match that of the uh, damage caused uh, as a result of us ignoring the consequences of climate change as a function of our lifestyles. It is quite extraordinary that as a result uh, what is 
certainly or near certainly going to happen is that we are going to or we are in the process of bequeathing to future generations an extraordinarily disfaceful set of legacies uh, which they cannot avoid and yet we are wholly responsible for. Indeed, I think it would be difficult to fault the prediction uh, that all or nearly all of the following consequences um, uh, can be cited without question. Let me take Firstly, the whole issue of the habitability of the planet. There is no doubt with the predicted rising temperatures uh, resulting from the rising concentration of uh, carbon dioxide and other gases in the atmosphere that the temperatures can arise. Uh, that in turn will make regions of the planet uh, less and less habitable. In the process, it will lead to mass migration on a scale that will affect hundreds of millions, if not more, uh, people as they seek to move or are obliged to move uh, to other regions of the world which are um, less, uh, uh, less directly affected. And if one thinks of the problems associated with the uh, migration at present from uh, Africa of populations from the Middle East and uh, Africa itself uh, across the Mediterranean into Italy and into other European countries one can begin to see what political and practical problems and moral problems that will come in the wake of this process being hugely exaggerated because it will not only be a migration for political reasons uh, uh, and economic reasons but for reasons of, of, for ecological reasons that the uh, countries in which these people uh, uh, have lived uh, are, will now be and are increasingly subject to uh, rising temperatures, uh, higher incidence of drought or flooding uh, or difficulties of the land producing sufficient crops for their population to feed on. In turn, of course, uh, that could well lead to wars of survival owing to shortages. It will certainly lead to, uh, and is already leading to, uh, shortages of water uh, and, and food in different parts of the planet. But of course, again, exag increasingly exaggerated uh, by virtue of the rising temperature of the planet and the rising temperature of the sea on which so much of our food depends. Inevitably, owing to the fact that uh, mineral reserves are finite, uh, that as we use them up more and more there will be less and less available for future generations. And how are they to cope with that? Are they given any thought in the political processes that are presently being uh, adopted in order to determine uh, international action in these areas? We are in the process of imposing an obligation on hundreds if not thousands of future generations to look after the radioactive waste which is the consequences of our uh, uh, use of um, nuclear powered electricity generation uh, at present time the only means whereby um, we can feel safe is to bury the toxic wastes underground but that doesn't solve the problem entirely because there is the possibility, a distinct possibility, that over time as some of those radioactive wastes will start leaking from their repositories. That obligation is just imposed without any uh, recompense, so to speak, for future generations having this additional burden imposed on their uh, qualities of life. Likewise, there is the risk of nuclear war owing to the spread of, uh, uh, owing to the proliferation of weapon, weapons applicable uh, technology uh, 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 allowing for uh, uh, um, wars to be fought at that level. Those uh, possible consequences cannot be ignored.
And perhaps finally, one can refer to the increasing financial debts uh, that are being transferred and are rising, being transferred to future generations because of the fact that we are not prepared to live within our financial means. I mean, I said finally, but in fact, in fact I think even more so a concern about the following legacy which is really, really frightening, uh, namely the fact that future generations, including our own, I suppose, are going to increasingly be reading in the newspaper or viewing on television grimmer and grimmer news and evidence of this uh, process of climate change which will be, which is already underway and can only get worse. And to illustrate that point, one has only got to make reference to the fact that there are no ways of reversing uh, the process uh, which is melting the Arctic ice caps.